Hey everybody, welcome to or welcome back to Figs Outside. So what we're doing today is we are going to replace the rear window seal on my daughter's uh, 2002 Ford F-150. This is a pretty common issue. They leak really bad. Um, they leak really, really bad. Uh, it's just a terrible design by Ford. Um, and uh, when I had the body shop give me a quote, it was about $700. I looked up the gasket seal kit and everything, and that was $400 just in and of itself. And that's why the price was so high. But then I looked online, um, found a couple blogs. They showed how to do it, so I'm going to do a uh, video of how to do it. So the window seal is a two-piece design. Let me show you guys real quick. All right, guys. So um, anyway, this window seal is a two-piece part. Um, so you got the trim, which goes around. It's got this its own little rubber rubber seal thing. And then you got the window piece that goes right here. And this is what actually bolts inside the truck. It's got a little tiny uh, rim that runs all the way around it on the inside. And then it's got little, uh, I think it's got 12 of them. Um, and anyway, it's got 12 little studs that stick out. And then it's got the little nuts on the back side. So anyway, this is the piece that in here is where the seal is that always leaks. Um, you can get the whole thing. It's like 400 bucks for the whole kit. Um, or you can go buy some butyl tape um, at your local hardware store. Um, they use it for like water sealing doors and gutters and all sorts of stuff. Um, the stuff that you want, it's not the flat tape stuff. It's, they it, call it butyl tape, but it's, it's kind of semi-round and it's 5 16ths. So anyway, um, oh, sorry guys. And so anyway, it bolts in the back here. You gotta pop these tabs off. And so some of the things that you're gonna need to get this, the seat belt piece right here is a 15 millimeter. Um, gotta pop that out. That is a 15 millimeter for that. And then the wind, the little pieces all around the window are um, nine millimeter. So anyway, we're gonna get to it. All right, thanks guys. All right, guys, there, we got it lit up for you. All right, so as you can see, um, I already popped that tab out, just used a flathead screwdriver. We got two more, um, and these are this type of a tab. It's just got a little, it's like a little button almost, and then it fits over that piece in there. And so just use a good old flathead screwdriver to take off the coat hooks or the coat hanger hooks. You just need a uh, Phillips. Uh, number two and this bolt right here for the seat belt it is a 15 millimeter so that's what that is um is kind of one of those you just not to let just just let stuff fall so that comes off there just like that what I like to do with something like this just put that little nut back on there this will slide down and you're good to go and then I'm gonna yeah I don't need to show you guys that part where I take these part these off but let me uh let me show you guys one of those buttons really quick hold on readjust the camera all right there we go guys so Of course, you could also buy a, a trim tool. It kind of looks like a, kind of has a fork on it. And I, I should probably just go get one. Yeah, it's kind of stubborn. So I'll pop that off. You can see they're a little bit difficult to get off. We got these little, I don't know if it'll focus on that. Anyway, it's got these little retainer pieces in there. And I'll do the other side, and then um, these ones right here that's on this lower side. Um, let me show you guys this one right here. I should probably just go get one of those trim tools. And so this one right here is actually one of those trim tabs. It's a button that's got all the little 
the little fins that come off of it goes to a little point and that's what they use to hold on like a whole bunch of your trim and all that kind of stuff for like your doors and everything else there's their uh, pop trims but anyway so i'm gonna get the rest of this done and also we got a couple more of those little buttons up there so anyway i'm gonna get that done and i'll see you guys here in a little bit all right everybody so we got the tabs popped out um including these ones we got those little red ones with the little circle that goes into that little tiny stud that's in there then we got the ones out of the headliner pulled out those are pretty long and these are the trim tabs that i was talking about and these ones and then the ones down here are these little short boogers and so the next step is to get this corner piece off and so what i did and i already got the seat belts off as you can see so what i did is i just pulled the body trim away a little bit and let me sorry guys so here we go so to get these off they're pretty tight um i wanted to show you oh, there. that one just popped out so there's a little metal tab right there and you can push on that with a flat bladed screwdriver and there's another one and there as you can see and there's another one it's hiding up in there and you can see that little tiny tab there we go and you just push on that little tiny tab with the flathead screwdriver you got to be careful with them you just push on them and you just kind of pull and it'll pop out and so i'll show you guys what it looks like here in just a second all right guys so i got those popped loose and you just kind of gotta finagle remember it goes back behind this one too so what i did is i just kind of grabbed it on the back side and i just kind of started wiggling and pulling it and then when you get up here, I don't know if you can see that in there or not. Oh, let's see. There we go, focus. Oh man, I made it worse. Okay. Oh. I'm trying to focus. Anyway, there's two little metal tabs in there, and they're biting onto the inside part of this 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 corner piece. Um Yeah, it's not going to focus. Stupid thing. So anyway, you got to get those tabs. You got to reach in there. I'm going to try to figure that out. You can just use a screwdriver is what it looks like and you just kind of bend that tab out and this will pop loose. I'm sure if you just kind of wiggled it, it'll pop out too. I might try that and I'll let you guys know here in a second. All right, y'all. So I got that popped off, that corner piece. It's got these little tabs, top and bottom. Sorry for the glare. It's kind of dark in here. So you can see the tabs right there. I kind of boogered that one up. Um, but anyway, um, those tabs... They got a little, like a little tooth right there, and it bites into that little that little plastic tab. So you just got to be careful. Um, anyway, like I said they're upper and lower, and then once you get that done, you can pull this back since you got those, and you got these right here, and you got looks like one, two, three, four of them. And then, of course, you got them up here, I do believe. Uh, yeah, be careful with the headline. Remember, it's, it's they're pretty pretty breakable, so you got a couple up there, too. Yeah. So that's the next step, is you got to undo those little those, uh, nuts off of the bolts, and that's what holds the framing for the windshield, and because it's two parts. So you got a frame. And then you also have the trim part. Um, so anyway, I'll show you guys that here in a second. All right, guys. So for those little nuts, they are um, nine millimeter. I thought they were 10, but they looked a little small to me. Well, they are a little tiny bit small. They are a nine millimeter for all of them. Um, so nine millimeter. And probably better to go with the deep socket because some of the, the little bolts are a little long. Um, you could probably get away with it on the on these ones right here, but these other ones um, probably have to pop these off too. It looks like it. So anyway, nine millimeter, not a ten. All right, guys. So been sitting here just playing around with these tabs and trying to get these this corner piece off and kind of dinking around trying different things. So what I found easiest to get a fairly long flat headed screwdriver. This one is about seven inches long anyway what you do is you reach in there for the flathead and you just kind of you'll have that plastic piece to go against it and you just kind of push 
just like that on the tab and it'll lift up and then you got the one that's back down in there um, you can see it so it's right straight back in here this is the seat belt piece and it's on its lowest setting so it's directly back in there and you do the same thing and i already popped this one off i just want to show you guys easy just to take the take the screwdriver shove it in there and then just push back and lift up on that tab just a little bit because it's got that little little piece in there that little tooth or whatever the heck it is that bites into that plastic you can see it's it's pretty chewed up because i keep playing around with it and just trying to make it easier to give you guys a little better better hint and better tip so anyway i'm going to continue on all right guys so i got all of those little nine millimeter uh yeah so you got them here and i don't know if you really need to take these ones out or not they seem kind of loose compared to the other ones but anyway i got them all taken out just because and so you also have so you also have those ones that are up in there kind of a pain in the butt the wiring harness see if i can get it to focus and it's not gonna focus without uh, let's see uh anyway there it is so those are in the corners you only got the two in the corners um above that corner piece and then the next step is to get some good old putty knives if you got them and uh i'm going to use an exacto knife you can see it right there and then what you do is there's right here all around the edge you just run that exacto all the way around it be very very careful it's better to have two people to do this um, i might just wait until the wife gets home that way if the windshield falls backward but i'm going to be holding on to the back side on this kind of like this anyway to hold that glass in there and then i can still catch it and grab it um and if it's just you well i guess you can put some stuff in the bed um that would uh help it not to break but i'm gonna give it a whirl and uh we're gonna pop it out and see what happens so just remember you got to cut all the way around in this thing when you get over here just be sure you're cutting on the inside of this piece and not on the not on the uh, spot welded tab that's right here but on the back side okay guys Next step. There it is, guys. Got the window out. So here's the trim. And here's the same stuff that we got. It's called Butyl Tape. B-U-T-Y-L. And uh, I think usually you can get it at like Home Depot or as I like to call it, Home Desperate, Ace Hardware, any of those places like that. It's just uh, like a super tacky, spongy tape. Um, and you can see right there. You just gotta peel it off, scrape it off real easy so you don't jack up this piece right here. Um, so anyway, you gotta clean all of that off before you put the new stuff on. So you can see some of the, some of the stuff just peels right off. So anyway, there it is guys. You got, uh, let's go one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, nine millimeter nuts you got to take off, and these are all the little the little bolt heads. So anyway, I'm gonna scrape all that off. Plus, you also got to scrape off the stuff on the inside right here, and you can see it was right there. It's just a lot of dirt and junk, so that's where it was failing, and then. Scrape all this stuff off. You can see it on the other side too. Actually, without the bright light, right over there, you can see that's the headliner. You see it right there, but right over there, it was failing. And so the truck smelled like mildew and it was soaking wet on the floorboards. So I got a little carpet piece underneath there and we're gonna start scraping all the stuff off. All right. Okay, guys, I thought this stuff was gonna be kind of a pain in the butt to take off, but it's actually not that bad. Um, A lot of it just sits there and it rolls up, as you can see. It just kind of peels and I just kind of... And it's actually really cold out. It's about 45, 46 degrees outside. I mean, it's not super cold, this is cold. So this stuff is, I mean, you could rip most of it up and off, just use a scraper to clean it all up. Yeah, sticking to my finger. 
So it's really not that bad, guys. Just wanted to kind of give you guys a peek at how, look at that dirt just packed in there. And they also sell a butyl uh, and a caulk too. And it looks like they give you a little line. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But right there, there's like a little line. It kind of goes all the way around. It looks like that's where you're supposed to run this stuff as well as the caulking too. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys a little, little quick demonstration on how easy it was to get this stuff up. It was real easy. Real easy, as you guys can see. So it doesn't take much. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going to finish this up and then I'm going to start on the cab and then I'll get back to you guys here in a little bit. All right, everybody. So we got all that stuff cleaned off. Not too bad. Um, it actually only took me, I think it was like 16 or 17 minutes to scrape the whole thing clean, including around there. And then um, to me, this is where I would want to be super OCD, especially on the windshield frame and even on this, is to get all the little itty bitty tiny chunks that are left behind. Um, and when you clean it with the alcohol, you could really see them. And so I went through and I got all the little bitty pieces off, including on the frame. Because to me, if you're just going to leave something old on there, that's just another spot that the new butyl tape can fail. Um, you're just giving it to another spot, especially if you have a big clump in here, which I did after I cleaned all off. I said, oh, it looks pretty good. Actually, it was right in here. I had a chunk. Um, and then when I cleaned it with the alcohol, I was like, oh, there it is. And, I sc and it scraped off super easy. So if I were to lay the new butyl tape over the top of it, um, the water's just going to seep back underneath the old stuff. And that's not what you want, especially after you're taking the time and the energy and uh, even the money on the tape to do all this. Um, and uh, I don't know, the forum said it could take two hours. Some people said three hours. It was actually not too bad. Um, just those the, the corner pieces were the most difficult part. Um, everything else was pretty easy. And then, you know, uh, another thing I wanted to point out um, that I should have mentioned earlier and I didn't. So hopefully you watch this all the way through before you just go ahead and start tackling it step by step. Um, just peeling off some of the excess tape that it's on the bolt threads, but the water shouldn't be going there anyway. Um, is when you're cutting it out with the exacto knife or even a knife is you got to be really careful um because there's a little rim that runs around the edges on all the corners um so when you shove the exacto knife in there you just be sure you don't want to get too crazy um and start cutting into those and so uh, anyway that's my little spiel on that and then i went through i took uh, just straight up isopropyl alcohol and I went through and I cleaned everything off. Got all the oils off, including off of my fingers. Um, and I'll probably do it one more time just because. And I did the same thing all the way around the edges. There's another spot that you want to look for really carefully is right here on the edges because they're imperfect anyway. And that's where they bent the metal. And you got a bunch of little spot welds all through here. Um, and those... I got all the junk out of those too. So that's just, like I said, another spot where the new stuff could fail, including into right here where it's a little rough anyway. So I went hold, I just kept scraping it all off with my finger and went pretty well. Same went down here on the bottom corners. Um, but you want to be sure you go all the way around. I'm going to wipe it down one more time just because I was touching it. And this is called butyl tape. It comes in in a roll. This, what you want to use is the 5 sixteenths. That's what everybody recommends that I read on the forums. Um, and, uh, there was a guy who even worked at Ford and he said he used, or they used the 516 state. This stuff is just like this. It's kind of tarry, kind of nasty, um, kind of sticky. You can see it on my fingers and it, I'm having a hard time getting this stuff off. So, but anyway, went ahead and wiped down all the edges before I did that. Blew all the dust out of the windshield, um, and the dirt and stuff that was in there. And you could definitely see the spots where it failed. So... Anyway, I'm going to wipe this down. I'm going to lay the butyl tape on there, and then uh, we'll see you here in a few minutes. All right, guys. So we got the butyl tape on, as you can see. And what I did is I started in the middle at the bottom, because uh, why would you want to start it at the top? It's just another seam. So anyway, it's pretty cold still. So um, this stuff is super tacky. Uh, but what I did is I just unrolled it and just light, light, just a real light stretch and just 
placed it on there and just kind of pressed it down um, all the way around. And of course, I ended up back here and I just kind of folded it into itself. Uh, and then what I did is I took a little strip of this stuff um, that it's wrapped in, used the slick side that it sticks to, or the slick side that it was stuck to, and I just went ahead and kind of laid it on there like so and just kind of real lightly. You don't want to get all crazy and smash it. That's what the bolts are for um, to make sure it's all even. And I just kind of went through and I just kind of just real lightly to make sure it sticks all the way around, especially on the corners. Uh, so when we go to put it up there, you know, it doesn't start rolling or sliding off because it is kind of cold. If it was warmer, it'd probably be a little better, especially if this frame was a little warmer, but it's not. So I'm working with what it is. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get my daughter. Oops, you see my breath. I'm going to get my daughter and we're going to put this in. That way it doesn't fall out as we're putting it in. She'll just kind of hold it up there. So anyway, on to the next step. It's just uh, pretty much reverse order to get this thing placed back in there. I'll tighten it down and uh, probably just do a couple little quick videos. Um, you want to snug it all down, make sure it's pretty much even all the way around. Um, you can use a uh, small torque wrench if you want. Um, I'm just going to snug it and then let the tape do its, rep, do its job and kind of smash and press itself out. That's one thing I like about the tape is you don't have to worry about the caulking where you need with the caulking you're going to want it to let it set up for a little while not all the way done but just most of the way done and then press it in there otherwise when you tighten it down it's just going to it's going to squish out of there and then that's not what you want the tape's not going to do that obviously so all right guys here we go all right everybody so got them all done got them all went in a clockward i got them all tight snugged them up with my fingers and then uh i started i did the corners first and then i just went back to the middle and I worked in the clockwork, uh, clockwise fashion. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is you don't need to do these ones up here that are in the corners. Um, that just loosens the seal. Um, but I think it, it, yeah, you don't really need to do those. So anyway, you don't have to do those. So hopefully you've watched this all the way through before you do that. But anyway, so got them all tightened up and there you go. And remember these ones on the side, they take the clips. Um, I started to do the other side. I was like, oh, shoot, and I, I did this side right, and I forgot the other side. So anyway, these are those little clips for the corner tabs. And so there it is. <clears throat> You'd think if they wanted a better seal, they would put these like every maybe five to six inches apart. But uh, anyway, it'll smash in there once it gets a little warmer. And it's, I mean, it smashed in there tight. So you can see it up in there, too, where it smashed into the corner right there. So, got them all snugged up and ready to go. Got the ones down here also. Same thing with these down here. You don't really need to do those. Um, but I did those anyway. Um, like I said, there's only 12 on the actual windshield frame. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to get the rest of it buttoned up and we'll put it together. All right, guys. So, before I put it all back together, I thought about it last night and I decided to stop the video. And now we're back in the morning. Um, it's a beautiful day. But I uh, figured it'd be a good idea to test this whole thing out and, and see if we get uh, any water. And before, I mean, any type of rain, it was just pouring in here. This whole thing was full of water. You can see the jack's kind of rusty um, underneath here. And, I mean, just a little bit of rain, and you would see it just running down this thing. So uh, we're going to... Give it a give it a whirl here. Let me uh, get this out and see it falling back behind there as well, which it was before. So yeah, let's put a little water on it and we'll see what happens. All right, guys. So putting some water on the old windshield here. Let's see, get it all in there. I've already been doing this for couple minutes just figured I'd show you guys that I actually am putting water on it. Open the brake light all up underneath. Alright, well let's see if we get any water leakage. So nothing. Totally dry in there. Totally dry there. Dry here. Sorry, guys. Tuck it back up in there. Let's go check 
the other side real quick. All right, here we are on this side. Everything is dry up in here. Everything is dry back here. Let's check out there. Yeah, it looks dry. Looks dry. I'm liking it. Everything looks dry back up in there too in the middle. So. There it goes. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to run a little bit more water on it just because you don't want to do all that work for nothing and uh, just put it all back together and find out it leaks again when you already got it pulled apart. So, all right. I'll see you guys here in a little bit. All right, guys. So I ran some water on it again. No leaks, no leaks. That is a great thing. So just a quick thing on this corner piece. Remember, when you do it, you got to line up those little tabs to those things and the part goes underneath just like so you line all that stuff up and those little tabs you kind of bend it just a little bit and you get those tabs lined up and press it all back in there remember it goes over the top of the liner and underneath the back piece and uh, everything else just kind of lines up so just a quick one all right. all right guys well we got it all put back together i ran the water over it like i said a few uh quite a few times no leaks so it's fixed um just uh i think it was roughly right around maybe uh two and a half three hours total and that's with me making the video and doing all that other stuff um so you got a couple hours and you got a few tools uh like a socket and a ratchet and a 15 millimeter and a nine millimeter uh and a couple putty knives flathead screwdriver roughly uh eight to ten inches long and uh yeah goes along it's kind of a pain in the butt but it's not too bad it's not real bad um, just simple stuff uh, just time consuming and anyway I hope this video helps you guys out and uh, I hope maybe with watching this video I didn't watch a video on it um, I just read some stuff so I hope this video helps you out and you can do it a little bit quicker and uh, anyway thanks for watching thanks for hanging out with me and uh, yeah anyway that is the rear window seal on a 2002 Ford F-150 all right, guys, and if this video does help you out, hey, could you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe? Um, and if you like hunting videos or anything else, you can hit that notification bell and uh, just down below. And uh, we'll talk to you guys a little later. All right, have a good day.